Here we're going to have a look at an amazing game by Anish Giri against Peter Svidler in the Chess 24 Banter Blitz Cup. You can see already, this position is just so interesting. How did Giri get his rook to h4? Well, we're going to have a look. From this table, you can see Giri won this match, going into the quarterfinals against Carlsen. So let's take it from the top. How on earth did this happen? Anish Giri has white, Peter Svidler has black. The game began knight f3, knight f6, c4, g6, knight c3. With this move order, Giri doesn't want to go for a mainline Grunfeld, but Peter Svidler is known for playing the Grunfeld often. So with this move order, we get an anti Grunfeld. Now is the chance for Svidler to strike in the center because if he plays the normal move bishop g7, white can play e4, and after d6, d4. We get a king's Indian, and Peter Svidler doesn't normally play this, so he needs to strike now, d5. Take, take, and now we play the trendy move because this knight is away from the center. Black has this pawn structure. And this is the trend nowadays. We go h4. It's a good move, not only in classical chess, but in blitz chess as well. h4, you're going to attack the pawn chain. You are going to attack the g6 pawn. This is known as a hook. You're going to go h5. Also, this knight is not on f6, so there's one less defender to the king. So h4, and early knight c6, h5. Bishop g7, blocking the diagonal now with d4 and bishop f5. So why does black play in this way? Getting his bishops out really quickly, good. Knight out quickly, good, because maybe the queen can come out. And with this setup, ideally, black wants to castle queenside. That's why in this setup, black didn't waste time getting his pawn to c5. Rook h4. We saw this right at the beginning of the video. I also listened to Anish Giri's stream. When he mentioned this move, we got two ideas. Supporting e4 and g4. If we go back a move, notice here, e4 is not possible. The knight does defend this, but black will now take, attacking the queen. So you take, and then you've just chucked a pawn. So not best. So, rook h4, and white now has these two options. Peter Svidler now attacks the rook with bishop f6, and Geary now goes g4, the other pawn push. Wow. I've never seen this before. If we go back to this position, bishop f5, this has been seen in Aronian Svidler back in 2010. So, rook h4, even though this is a blitz game, Geary is willing to use his novelty. Rook h4, bishop f6, g4, attacking the bishop. In the game, the rook was taken, but we must have a look if you move the bishop. Not best, because the g-pawn is now so useful, you can go g5. Bishop g7, h6, bishop f8. This is simply tragic. And here, y is just much better. There's a call move here. Knight d5, and after queen d5 or bishop d5, doesn't matter, you go e4. I've never seen this idea before. Because wherever the queen goes, it doesn't even matter if you give a check. If you go back, then d5, you're just going to win a piece. If you do throw in the check, then bishop d2. If you move the queen, then d5, winning a piece. If you go knight b4, a3, wins a piece this way. Using the pin on this diagonal. So, back to the game. g4. Swiddler took the rook with bishop h4. g takes f5, and now bishop f6. Geary once again mentioned uh, the best move, e6. So we're going to have a look at this now before looking at the game, which is bishop f6. e6 is a top option. So let's take on e6. Let's go bishop h3. And if queen e7, maybe we can play like this. And I've never seen this kind of position before. Now black is getting ready to castle, so we stop that with knight d5. And after take, we play bishop h6. And this is just 
so new to me. It's just so rare to see a position like this where white has two bishops slicing the board and black can't castle. He has sacrificed in exchange. The king is safe. It can just go to f1. This rook can go to c1. This queen, maybe it can go to a4. b3, putting pressure on b7. It can go to d3, maybe slide over. Black might tuck himself safe. Black might keep himself safe on f7. But there's still a lot of compensation. These two rooks aren't really able to get in the game. So that's a really, really cool line. Back to the game. G takes f5, bishop f6, and now e4. This position, it just looks so difficult for black to play. Knight c3, b c3. White has a giant pawn center. How strange to have pawns on f5 and h5 attacking the hook on g6. G takes f5 played. Geary mentioned e5, but I think he also mentioned the correct move, which is given by Stockfish as the top option. We're going to on pass on, and then we can just keep playing from here. Let's go rook b1. And then white's moves are pretty easy. First, you're going to have to deal with the b7 pawn, so maybe rook b8. But then white's going to put his bishop maybe on h3, maybe on a3, h6. And then white can time it, push this pawn. This queen can go to b3 to a4, just like before. White's got too many options. So here, if rook b8, bishop h3, queen e7, and this is too much, e5. Just initiative for white. Bishop there, bishop g5 is coming. Let's go h6 just to shut out this bishop. Bishop g5, queen f7, and now d5 is delightful. Take e6, this is too much. I think the funny thing is the queen is now trapped. Wow, what a line. And after d5, if you don't take it, then you can just keep playing. Maybe the knight can come to d4 next. The queen... As I've said before, it's got so many options. Maybe it can come to a4 now to give a check. It can even go to d4. So too many good options for white. What a game. So bc3, back to the game. Take on f5. And now e5. And here, Svidler fought for a minute or so and decided to play bishop takes e5. So why is bishop g7 wrong? Because it just gets shut out. It's just so tragic. h6, bishop f8, and now d5. Knight b8. It looks like black is just setting up his pieces, getting ready for the next game. Knight g5. And yeah, it's too much. The queen can go to h5. e6 is next. If you go queen d7, you can go e6 or even knight f7. Can't play king takes because e6 will win the queen. If you move the rook, you can go e6 or queen h5. Yeah, it's just too much. Rook g6, knight e5, picking up the rook. Take, take, take. H-pawn is a runner. Peter felt the need to return a piece. He's just lacking so much coordination. Bishop takes e5. Geary decides to keep the knights on, so he takes it the pawn. The queens come off. Queen d1 check, take. Castle with check. And Geary puts the king on c2. Very safe, because we've got an excellent pawn on c3, covering d4 and b4 so there's no knight check are you enjoying the video so far then why not like it and subscribe to the channel at the same time make sure you hit that bell then youtube will let you know when i release a new video now back to this amazing game by anish giri rook g8 taking the g file maybe planning to come in g4 g2 g1 if the knight and bishop move so rook g8 is good Geary now plays e6 because he doesn't want Peter to play e6. Another cool move is bishop g5, just blocking off the g file for the rook, protected by the knight. And if we go rook e8, then bishop c4 or bishop b5. You can double black's pawns. Bishop b5 might be better, e6, and then white can just play from here. Too much control, but e6 is still a great move going to take that bishop c4 now rook d6 geary was afraid of rook g2 as he mentioned but there's a brilliant backward move coming up 
and very difficult to see very quickly in blitz. So we're going to take with check king b8, bishop e3. And this is the point, f4. But a brilliant backward move attacking the rook, bishop h3, forcing it back, and then you can go bishop d2. You don't want to be careless. I don't think this works because rook f7 and you're in big trouble. Then a piece is going to drop. So no, you just go bishop d2. And then if e5, rook e1, rook e7, black wants to go e4. So you've got a couple of choices. Bishop to f5 to stop it or knight g5. And white is much better. Bishop c4. Svidler decides to go rook d6 to defend in a clumsy way. But he still has to defend. Bishop a3, king d7. And here, don't take the clumsy rook. Because this bishop is superior to a rook that cannot move. Giri plays a great move, rook e1. You don't want to take because it really is free pawns for the rook. These pawns are strong. After this capture, black no longer has double d pawns. Free pawns for the rook and it can still be pretty difficult to win. Black has choices. You want to go d5 or e5. By the way, this rook can come to g2. So here, if white plays rook g1 to stop it, well, maybe the rooks come off and it is not easy to win. So let's maintain the pressure. Giri played rook e1, which is a great move. Rook g4, now he decides to take it. The point of rook e1 is now you've got two pieces attacking e6. So Giri takes d6 to bishop d6, rook c4, and now bishop g3. Giri mentioned knight e5 check. Still pretty difficult to win. So this is four king, king and rook. Take, take, rook h4. And this is why Giri just spent a few minutes thinking. Because even though white has a piece, like the perfect bishop on e5, controlling all the dark squares, the pawn on h5 is going to drop. And then you've got this problem. So it's not easy to win. So Giri plays bishop g3, just keeping the piece b5 planning b4 knight g5 great move attacking this and that so double attack and now h6 just forcing the issue knight takes e6 and knight b4 check so let's check out Svidler's idea king b3 it looks like y is completely winning and he is but let's see how knight d5 and here Geary can play knight f8 check but he went rook e5 setting up a trap and Svidler played f4 falling for it really cool accurate sequence coming up rook takes d5 check so knight for knight and now is white in trouble no because Geary has seen a move further than Peter rook takes b5 now black's rook is under attack white's bishop is still under attack and this is over because after f takes g3 is this pawn dangerous? No, because now white takes the rook and here Peter resigned. Because no matter what you do, take or push, the rook can come back and white is a rook up, rounding up this pawn. Thank you so much for watching all the way until the end. That means you probably liked it. If you did, why not give the video a like and subscribe to the channel at the same time. Make sure you hit that bell, then YouTube will let you know when I release another video.